horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? In the foothills of the Sacramento Mountains, many small ranchers had settled. The two largest ranches were those belonging to Hank Comstock, who raised cattle and horses, and Josh Kinney, who raised sheep. The bitter feeling that had at first existed between the two ranches had turned into indifferent tolerance, though neither the ranchers nor their men were on friendly terms with one another. The bitterness broke out anew one morning when the sheep rancher's foreman entered the ranch house with a skull on his face. Hey, morning, Len. Sit down and have some coffee. Boss, I have bad news for you. Three lambs were killed during the night. Three lambs killed? How? I'd say they were killed by that great Dane owned by Hank Comstock's boy. I thunder if it was that dirty hound. Well, before I go accusing that dog, what makes you think he did it? Well, I found big dog tracks near where they were killed. The sheep tender out there last night heard a dog barking. Oh, and that great Dane is the only big dog in the neighborhood. Right. <laughs> Come on, men. We're going over to Comstock's place right now and see what he's going to do about it. Meantime, Hank Comstock was at breakfast with his wife and 10-year-old boy, Lee. Lee, how many times do I have to tell you to keep that dog away from the table when we're eating? Down, Duke. Go right down. Duke was waiting at the back door when I opened it this morning, Lee. Didn't you shut him up in the woodshed last night? Well, yes, Mom, I did. Well, next time, make sure the door is closed tight, understand? I don't want him yelling around at night, disturbing the hands and all. All right, Dad. May I be excused now? Yes, yes, you run along, son. Uh, come on, Duke. Come on. That great Dane just worships the ground Lee walks on, seems like. You know, Lee's been a different boy since he got that dog. Well, I reckon a dog is good for a boy at that. Well, I'm going back on the range. Look over those new horses I bought yesterday. One of the mares has a mighty fine black and white colt Lee might like to own, take care of as soon as it's weaned. Oh, Hank, Lee will be mighty happy to own it. Oh, somebody coming. I'll see who it is. All right, Hank. Well, Josh Kitty, what brings you and Len here? Nothing pleasant you can figure on that. All right, get to the point. I haven't any time to waste. We lost three lambs last night. 
Len has reason to believe they were killed by that dog of yours. That's right. Now, wait a minute. Don't come here yapping about something you can't prove. The sheep tender heard a dog barking during the night out there, and Len found dog tracks. Well, that doesn't prove Lee's dog, did it? That's all you come here to tell me. You might as well get back to your filthy sheep and let them... Well, I'm going to tend to my own work. I might have known you'd talk that way, Hank Comstock. But I'm telling you, I'm giving my men orders to shoot that great Dane on sight if he comes on our property. Come on, Len. Let's go. After the two sheep men had left, Hank called Lee into the house. You want me, Dad? Yes, I do. Josh Kinney accuses that dog of yours of killing some of his lambs. What have you to say to that? Oh, golly, Dad, I don't believe it. You wouldn't do a thing like that. I know he wouldn't. Well, I'm not so sure. By Jiminy, if I find out he did do such a thing, I'll shoot him myself, you understand? Yes, Dad. See, these locked up every night, like I told you. We have enough troubles as it is with those sheep herders without having that dog bring more. Now get him out of my sight and see that I get no more complaints. Yes, Dad. Come on, you. Lee left the house with his dog and walked down to the ranch gate out by the trail. He sat on a boulder and scuffed his foot in the dirt as he stroked Duke's smooth coat. Suddenly, the dog growled and barked as two horsemen approached. Golly, last man and an Indian. Oh, sir, oh, sir. Oh, oh, that's a fine dog you have there, son. Well, I think so, mister. Are you outlaws? No, we're not outlaws. But you wear a mask. That's so real outlaws can't recognize me when I help capture them. Oh, oh look, Duke is wagging his tail as if he likes you. Easy, slippy clock. Perhaps he knows I like dogs. Here, Duke. He really does like you, mister. Funny, though. He doesn't like everybody he meets. I think dogs have a way of knowing people who like them. What's your name, son? Uh, Lee Comstock. I live in there. I've heard of your father. Dad is angry because the sheepman told him Duke killed some lambs last night. But I know he didn't. I see. Was he out last night, Lee? Well, he did get out of the shed where I keep him. But I'm sure Duke wouldn't kill lambs. The best way to be sure, Lee, is to make certain Duke can't get out at night. Then no one can accuse him. Isn't that right? Is it because of what was said about your dog that caused you to sit there looking so sad just now? Well, mostly I was thinking about something else. Mom told me just a while ago that Dad was going to give me a black and white colt he bought with some other horses yesterday. Now maybe he'll change his mind. I hope not, Lee. Well, I saw that colt yesterday. Gosh, he's a beauty. I reckon he'd grow up to be almost as nice-looking as your horse or the Indians. Why, of course. Well, we'll say goodbye now, Lee. Perhaps we'll see you again sometime. Oh, goodbye, mister. Goodbye, Indian. Adios. Come on, sir. Get him up. Come. That night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto made camp in a grove on a hillside. The moon shone brightly, and they had rolled in their blankets in the shadows when they heard a thundering noise in the valley below. They got up and walked to the edge of the grove. Now that herd wild horses running through valley. Yes, Tonto. They're heading for the safety of the hills. Well, let's go back to the camp. Uh -huh. The two men once more rolled in their blankets. But only about an hour later, they were again aroused by distant shots. You hear those shots, Toto? Uh, me hear them. We'll saddle the horses and go investigate. Quickly, they saddled Silver and Scout, then started out in the direction from which the shots had seemed to come. Come on, Silver! Come on, Scout! As they rounded a bend in the trail, Toto's keen eye saw a figure lying beside the trail... As they approached, they heard a dog whine. That dog beside trail. Oh, 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 o
but was too weak to stand. It's all right, Duke. We'll take care of you. We'll take him back to our camp, Toto, until we find out what this is all about. The following morning, Toto went to town for supplies. When he returned at noon, he brought news. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Did you hear anything about the dog, Toto? Ah. Them say sheep herder see dog near flock. Him shoot, but dog get way. Then him hear bleating. When him go look, him find another lamb killed. But we know Duke couldn't have done that. That right. And me hear something else, Kimasabi. Oh? Well, during night, some of Comstock's new horses stolen. Thieves driving down valley where wild herd leave plenty tracks. So them get way. <sighs> that was smart. Ah, but Comstock blame sheepmen. Him say them steal horses because them think dog kill sheep. The situation is getting tense between Kinney and Comstock. Others may be drawn into a range war. That's right. We'll investigate. I'd like to find out who stole those horses and also who or what killed those lambs. That noon at the Comstock Ranch... The boy, Lee, again faced his angry father. Lee, from what they say, they got the goods on that dog of yours. I told you to lock him up, make sure he couldn't get out of that shed. I did lock him up, Dad, but I found a loose board in the side of the shed where he got out. (laughs) He didn't come back this time. Well, good riddance. (laughs) It's caused enough trouble. Because of him, you lost that black and white coat I was going to give you, too. Those sheepmen stole him along with the others. Oh, golly. You shouldn't accuse Josh and his men of stealing those horses. After all, that's a serious charge. Yes, and horse stealing's a serious business, Ida. Sheriff's out with the posse scouring the hills trying to find them. I sure hope we do find them. Catch some of Josh's men red-handed guarding them. No, no I haven't a dog or, or a cold either. Well, but... serves you right. Not going to do any good going around blubbering about it. You're not responsible enough to have a dog or a cold. When I find Duke and the cold, I'll take good care of them from now on. Poor little fellow's broken-hearted about losing both that dog and the cold, Hank. Well, you'll have to get over it, that's all. I'm going to ride over into the hills, find the sheriff and the posse. I want to be with them when and if they run down the thieving polecats who took those horses. That afternoon, the boy Lee left the ranch house and headed for the hills. He was determined to find both his dog and the colt, which would have meant so much to him. After a time, he left the hot, dusty trail and climbed up the hillside, gradually going further into the wild foothills. Here, Duke! Here, boy! He must be around here someplace. I just know he is. Here, Duke! After a time, he gave up calling the dog. He was hot and thirsty, and his short legs were weary. Finally, he reached the top of a rocky ridge and sat down to rest on a log. Uh, I, I just can't go any further. I can't. Tired by the constant walking and the long climb, Lee gradually dozed off. When he awoke, long shadows were deepening on the ridge and the hilltops around him. He realized it was almost sunset and got to his feet. I have to get home. It'll soon be dark. I'd better hurry. For a short time, he walked hurriedly in the direction he thought would take him home. Then, as he stopped to rest, he saw the same log. That log? That's where I sat down before. I'm lost. What's those noises? Maybe wild animals up here. I, I have to find my way home. I, I have to get home. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Intent on finding his dog and the stolen colt, the boy Lee Comstock had wandered into the rough foothills. As sundown approached, Lee became panicky as he realized he was lost. Meantime, in a small canyon not far away, two men who had camped under a ledge were preparing to break camp. Their riding horses, already saddled, were ground hitched nearby while five sleek horses and a colt grazed a short distance away. Hey, hear that mountain lion, Wes? Yeah. We better keep a close watch of driving those horses toward the border tonight. He's not going to bother us when we're on the move, Al. <laughs> Don't forget, he may be the same one that started the trouble between Comstock and Kenny over that dog. <laughs> yeah. I reckon we're the only ones who know the dog actually chased that mountain lion away from those sheep. Well, the milling flock covered over the lion's tracks, but they found a few dog tracks and saw the dog. So he got blamed. Yeah, and it worked out again for us when the wild horses passed through. So the tracks of Comstock's horses couldn't be found. You know, I didn't get the idea of grabbing those horses till I learned about the dog. I decided we could wait till those wild horses pass through the valley like they do so often, then steal Comstock's prize horses and let the sheepmen get the blame. You think they will get blamed? Uh, sure. <laughs> Comstock will think they did it to get back at him for protecting his dog. Yeah, those horses will bring a big price. As soon as the moon comes up, we'll start moving them. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had gone in the direction of the foothills in hopes of picking up the trail of the horse thieves. The herd of wild horses that roamed the territory complicated matters since the masked man and Indian had no particular marked trail to follow. Finally, at the base of a ridge, the two men pulled to a stop. Oh, so who's down? Steady, big fella. Well, Toto, so far we haven't had much success. No. Horse thieves have plenty good start, Kimasabi. True. But the logical thing would be for them to hide the stolen horses during the daytime and move on at night. Ah. That's why I hope to find them in these foothills. It isn't long until sundown. I suggest you go down about a mile and ride back along the ridge from there. I'll take this trail up the ridge here and ride to meet you. Look in the canyons for the horses. Ah. Get him up, Scout. Come on, sir. When he reached the top of the ridge, the Lone Ranger stopped and dismounted. Oh, Silver. Oh, he's still in Leaving Silver ground hitch, the masked man walked toward a cliff edge to look into the canyons below. He passed alongside a rocky peak, the sides of which were covered with jagged formations and ledges. Suddenly, he was startled by an unexpected happening. The Lone Ranger swung around, and it was then he saw the boy Lee crouched on a log. A short distance away, a tawny mountain lion stood on a ledge ready to spring. Lee, don't move! The Lone Ranger's quick shot had slightly wounded the mountain lion, which turned in fury to face the approaching man. The Lone Ranger moved in for the kill. His eyes were focused on the infuriated animal on the ledge. When his foot struck an exposed root, he lost his footing on the sliding shale and crashed to the ground. But a glancing blow from a jutting rock had momentarily stunned the masked man, and he lay without moving. The valiant horse, Silver, had heard the snarling and saw his master fall. As the mountain lion crouched for a spring, the intelligent stallion started forward at a gallop. Just as the animal leaped to the ground, Silver galloped between him and the lone ranger. The great stallion reared and took the offensive by slashing at the lion with his front hooves. The boy Lee watched in wide-eyed fear as Silver battled the infuriated beast. Silver met every snarling attack with flailing hooves and squeals of anger. The Lone Ranger's mind cleared as the stopping and the noise of the furious battle resounded through the hills. Silver, fighting the mountain lion. Getting hurriedly to his feet, the masked man picked up his guns, then moved over beside the boy, Lee. He waited a chance to use his guns, but feared to risk hitting Silver. Finally, with a loud squeal of rage, Silver reared high and brought his sledge-like forefeet pounding down toward the snarling yellow beast. It was then that the Lone Ranger fired. Silver, Silver, good work, boy. Golly, Silver saved you from the lion, mister. Yes, I know. Well, the 
Brian would have killed me, maybe, if you hadn't come. What are you doing up here in the mountains? Well, I was hunting for my dog in my black and white coat. And then I got lost. Well, your dog is all right, Lee. Toto and I found him slightly wounded. He's at our camp. Oh, golly! Uh, but, but if they know he's found, they'll shoot, Duke, because of the lambs. I don't think so, Lee. Oh, here comes Toto. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Kimasabi. Me here, big fighter animals. You all right? Yes, Toto. Silver fought that mountain lion to save my life. Um, that good. And Kimasabi. Yes. Me see two men in small canyon back yonder. Me see five horses and colt with them. Was it a black and white colt? Ah. But why this boy up here? Briefly, Lee told Tonto about coming to search for his dog and the colt. Then the Lone Ranger spoke. Well, it's still not enough to see. I'll take Lee on Silver with me and we'll ride back to where you saw those horses and men. Let's go. Uh Ah. The masked man and Indian rode down the ridge a short distance. Then leaving Lee with the horses in a place of safety, they moved to the edge of the canyon wall. Look, them down there. Yes, they're getting ready to leave. It's only about 20 feet down to the floor of the canyon. I'll tie my lariat to that stump over there, then we'll go down. Come on. Uh The place where the Lone Ranger and Tonto slid down the rope was in the shadows, and the two crooks, Wes and Al, didn't see them. The crooks had packed their supplies in their saddlebags and were preparing to mount. I wonder what happened back there in the hills, Al. Sure sounded like a couple of animals having a terrific fight. Yeah. But as long as they keep away from us, let them battle. Come on, let's them out and get going with the horses. They're acting kind of far. Funny. Freeze, both of you. Hey, look, near that boulder of mast, hombre. Yeah, they're trying to grab the horses from us. Him and that engine, use your gun, Wes. Hold it. You drop gun. Oh! oh. We'll take oh. care of you. Otto, we bandage their wounds, oh. then tie them to their mounts and go to the Comstock Ranch. Ah. Me go up wall, bring Silver and Scout here. A short time later, Tonto and Lee arrived at the place in the canyon where the Lone Ranger was guarding the two wounded crooks. Then driving the stolen horses before them, the masked man and Indian started with the boy and the crooks along the canyon in the direction of the Comstock Ranch. Before long, they left the foothills and moved along the main trail. There was still enough twilight for them to see. As they rounded a bend, they saw a group of horsemen approaching. Look, horsemen coming. Maybe a posse. Gosh, I think I see Dad with a shear. Dad! Dad! We found the horses! As the two groups met, they stopped. Here, I'll help you, Lee. The sheriff and his men held guns as the sheriff asked. What's that? Who's that masked man? Not Indian. They must help steal the horses. Oh, wait a minute, Sheriff. The masked man and the Indian aren't crooks at all. They saved my life and caught the two men who had stolen Dad's horses. Son, I heard from one of my men that you were missing. That's why we were heading back to the foothills. How come you went up there like you did? The boy went to search for his dog and for the colt, Mr. Comstock. Yeah, well, that dog has a bullet waiting for him when he does come back. The dog didn't kill Kinney's sheep. We're not taking the word of a masked man on that, mister. Kinney's men saw that dog and even fired at him last night. But he got away. What's more, you haven't explained that mask. Use your common sense, Sheriff. Why would we tie these crooks and bring them and the stolen horses back here if we wanted to get away? Well, that's right. Just what's this all about, anyway? Well, let me tell you, Dad. Lee told in detail what had happened. The men listened intently as he described the fight between Silver and the mountain lion and how the Lone Ranger and Tonto went down into the canyon to capture the thieves. He finished by saying... And the lion would have killed me, Dad, if the masked man hadn't come along. And he has Duke at his camp. He says most likely the lion killed the sheep. By thunder, mister, in spite of your mask, I'm thankful to you for saving my boy. Hold on, Hank. We can prove the boy's story by backtracking to where they left the dead lion. But it doesn't clear that great Dane of killing Josh's lambs. Sheriff, didn't the sheepman see the dog and fire at him last night before any lambs were killed? That's right. They missed him. And he went back later. No. The dog was wounded, and we found him unable to walk. We took him to our camp and attended to his wound. The dog is still there. Well, then he couldn't have done the killing that took place later. That's right. All the killings must have been done by the mountain lion. He, in turn, attracted the dog to the scene. By Jiminy, I reckon you're right, mister. That does put Duke in the clear. See? I told you Duke wasn't to blame. Well, I'll be doggone. Sheriff, the masked man and Indian are friends. And you ought to be glad they caught the horse thieves. I am because I got my colt back. 
If Dad will let me have him. Why, of course, son. And we'll ask the masked man where to pick up your dog, Duke, too. I reckon Duke will sort of know I misunderstood him. Tuttle and I'll take a shortcut to our campsite and get Duke. We'll leave him at your ranch as we pass by, Mr. Comstock. He'll be there by the time you reach home. Gosh, mister, if it hadn't been for you and Tano, everything would have been just awful. We're glad we could help, Lee. Take good care of Duke and the Colt. Someday we'll stop by to see you again. Josh Kinney is sure going to have to apologize for the way he acted. And the way he blamed Lee's dog for what happened. Oh, uh, Mr. Comstock, you're forgetting that you accused Josh Kinney and his men of stealing your horses. I'd say you have some apologizing to do, too. Well, he's got you there, Hank. <laughs> well, I reckon the best thing is for Josh and me to get together and forget the whole thing. That's what I hoped you'd say. I'm sure you'll both take care not to be hasty in your accusations again. Being friendly will help both of you to prosper. Well, adios, Lee. Adios, everybody. Adios. Adios. Hey, wait. About that mask. I wanted to find Look, out. Look, Sheriff. Here. He said you'd know what the mask meant if I showed you the silver bullet he gave me. Silver bullet? <laughs> Why should... Say, he said, come on, Silver. And the Indian's name was Tonto, and then that white stallion and all. <laughs> sure, now I know. You know what? That he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.